Dr. Couch, thanks for joining us. Good to see you again. Our topic this time for Health Connection is respiratory failure, and we always like to start with a definition of terms. What is respiratory failure? Um, well, as you, it's two terms, respiratory and failure. So it's failure of the respiratory system. Um, in a short sense, that is that the lungs are considered the main component of the respiratory system. It's failing to get oxygen into the bloodstream and failing to get rid of the waste gas, which is carbon dioxide. And what causes respiratory failure? Well, the list of causes of respiratory failure is, is very long. And one way to understand respiratory failure, you need to understand the whole respiratory tract. Um, it starts with the upper respiratory tract, goes to your breathing tube, which goes in the back of your throat, and then it divides down into two lungs, your right and your left lung, and small little air sacs. Um, what can happen if you have any disruption of any part of that system or actually your chest wall? Your lungs only work because the chest expands um, and collapses to move the air in and out of the lung. So any disruption of that is going to be a cause of respiratory failure. Um, things that can do that can be tumors anywhere into the respiratory tract. You can have um, broken ribs, you can have uh, bruising to the lung, you can have a collapse to the lung, anything that's going to affect the respiratory system where the oxygen can't work. This is probably self-evident, but let me ask the question, what are the symptoms of respiratory failure? Um, most people, there's, there's two types of respiratory failure. There's the cr acute type of respiratory failure and the chronic. Um, those are people who are going to breathe fast. Um, they tend to have a low oxygen level. They'll have blue fingertips. Um, they'll be working hard to breathe. They won't be able to talk. Is this acute you're talking about? That's more acute. Okay, all right. The chronic is you have more difficulty doing things. You have trouble doing your activities of daily living. Um, you may have more swelling of your feet, um, shortness of breath, um, and sometimes a chronic cough. Well, you just, and you just segued into our next question, the differences between acute and chronic respiratory failure, but in, and you just explained the symptomatic difference, but what is the, uh, the, the, the causal difference and the, the clinical difference between acute and, and chronic? Um, well, acute is something, something happens abruptly that, that's causing the lungs not to function properly. Uh, you can have pneumonia, the air sacs fill with fluid. Uh, you can have bleeding into the lungs for different types of diseases. Um, you can have trauma. You, uh, um, you can have blood transfusions. Um, anything that... Uh, that, ha that happens all of a sudden. Happens all of a sudden. And, and maybe some external thing acting. Right, so if you're in a forest fire, you're a house fire, you're breathing in smoke, that can um, cause a lot of damage to the respiratory tract, right. and then it fills with fluid and you can't get the oxygen, it stops working. Well, let's contrast that to chronic respiratory failure. Chronic respiratory failure, uh, more commonly what you see is what we call COPD, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This is from people who have smoked for a long time and they have emphysema, so they have destruction of the lungs. And these people are shorter breath, and it develops over a period of time uh, where they have more difficulty keeping their oxygen up with doing things. When your oxygen doesn't stay up, it can affect other organ systems. It can affect your heart. It can affect your kidneys. Um, it can affect your brain. Um, Anything besides smoking that can bring about COPD? Uh, you actually start with your maximum amount of lung function when you're 20 years old and you tend to lose it as you age. So we can see senile emphysema as you get up in the 80s and 90 year olds and 100 year olds. Um, certain chemicals you may be exposed to, there are certain genetic diseases like cystic fibrosis that can cause chronic respiratory failure. Um, there is a disease called pulmonary fibrosis where you scar in your lungs for unknown reasons um, and therefore the oxygen is not able to get into the bloodstream. Who's at risk for developing respiratory failure? Um, 
usually the very young, now you can see it in newborns, um, that can develop respiratory failure. Uh, their lungs aren't, aren't mature enough when they're born or they've, during the process of being born, they can aspirate um, materials. The, the very old, because they're at high risk for pneumonias, people who have trauma, people who have major surgery or higher risk, people who are involved in jobs like the firemen who may be exposed to smoke or chemical fires, those people are at a higher risk of developing. People who um, have drownings or near drownings uh, will develop respiratory failure as well. How is respiratory failure diagnosed? Most commonly, it, because it, it's a problem with the oxygen not being high enough, getting into the bloodstream and not getting rid of your carbon dioxide, usually it's diagnosed by a blood gas, which is a sample out of your artery that measures your oxygen content and your carbon dioxide content. Um, a kind of a guide is one is the pulse oximeter that you can put on the finger and it can measure um, the saturation in the bloodstream, but there are things that can interfere with that. Once you have a diagnosis of respiratory failure, how do you treat it? Well, you, the most important thing is to treat the underlying cause first. Um, so if it's an infection, you, treat, you need to treat the infections. If it's a trauma or low blood count, or you're going to treat those things. Um, certain medica medications can cause problems with the lungs. You remove the, whatever the offending agent is. But more commonly, most acute respiratory failures are treated in the ICU. And they're treated with oxygen, medication. Sometimes they require a ventilator, and that's a machine that, that breathes for you. It's when you can't keep up with your oxygen and your breathing. Your muscles tend to wear out. I'm sorry, did I, did I interrupt oh. you? The, the, chronic, the chronic ones are more treated with oxygen, um, rehabilitation, keeping your muscles in shape. Um, controlling any other problems with that you may have any other underlying medical conditions. Didn't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, so someone who is diagnosed with respiratory failure, what is their outlook? What's the outlook for somebody long term with respiratory failure? Uh, it, Generally it really, speaking. It really depends on what the underlying cause is. Somebody who may have cystic fibrosis um, their overall prognosis is not good. Their overall outlook isn't good as they continue to cause damage to the lungs. Somebody with um, COPD, if they start stop smoking early, can do quite well. If they continue to smoke, they're going to continue to destroy that lung. But if somebody takes care of their lungs, you recognize the respiratory failure right away and you get immediate treatment, the outcome is usually fairly good. Very well. Doctor, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you.